This is Center Stage, putting lawyers in the spotlight by highlighting attorneys and other industry experts to help take your law firm to the next level. Hey everyone, and welcome to Center Stage. I'm your host, John Henson, and this week, I uh, wanted to focus on the importance of putting out good information and why it is so important for you to be educating your audience, really on a consistent basis. Um, and so joining me this week is a guy who has done that very well in his firm, and he's been gracious enough to join us this week and share some of the tips and some of the things that he has implemented along the way. And that is uh, attorney John Koenig from Elder Advisors Law. John, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to be here. Um, love helping people do more with what they have in front of them. And education is at my heart and soul. Um, I've been practicing law in the elder law area, estate planning area for uh, almost 20 years now. It's hard to believe I've been doing it that long. Um, but my, my, just a little bit of my background, my, my drive for education really comes from my father. Um, he has been edu- in education his entire life. Um, both public education as well as private education. And it sort of has drained down through the rest of his kids because there's three kids and all three of us are doing some type of education. You say, wait a minute, I thought you said you're an attorney. Well, an attorney, in my opinion, it's all about education because that's really the purpose of why we do what we do, especially in the elder law and estate planning areas. Yeah. And, you know, and like you said, you know, especially for, for elder law and estate planning, but I think it, just across law in general, you know, it, it's, it's so easy to forget that, you know, the people that you're serving don't know anything that you know, really, because I mean, the law is so broad, it's so complex, and there's so many different avenues that things can go down. And so to that point, you know, kind of just starting off with with a very broad look at things, why is good information and, and being able to provide that information to your audience so important in the first place? Well, I think the biggest reason why even now more than in the past, correct information, correct education is so important because there's so much incorrect education and incorrect information out there. You know, back in the day, you know, it was the discussions at the beauty shop or the barber shop where where you figured out your own law degree, all right, the law degree of the school of hard knocks. Right. Um, You know, nowadays you've got it in the palm of your hand. You know, all of us are holding a cell phone or in front of a computer, um, ask Siri, ask Google, um, ask Alexa, ask them whatever question you want, and you're going to get an answer. The problem is, in, especially in the legal area, and like you said, it's not just tied to a state plan and elder law. Across the board, there's so much wrong information that's out there. And it's, sometimes it's not necessarily flat, blatantly wrong. It's, it, it's so complex that people try to boil it down to simple things. And by doing that, sometimes you're ending up with a wrong answer or what happens even if you have the right answer and you apply it to your situation wrong, then you end up with a completely different uh, uh, set of circumstances, completely different information. And in our workshops, and we do workshops all the time, and we'll talk more about those in a few minutes, I'm certain, but it's so important for the educating the clients to under, help them understand that just because they read it online or just because this is what their brother or aunt or uncle told them at one day, it may not necessarily be true. And if it is true, they may be applying it wrongly to their situation. I, I have, a, I have a, a mug that I use regularly and it has this little saying on it. Please don't confuse your Google search with my law degree. <laughs> don't know if you've seen that before, but I love it because that's exactly what happens all the time. Yeah. And it comes down to the bottom line is it comes down to education. Um, knowledge is power is what they say. And it's so important to, under, to help your clients as attorneys to have that base of education. So when it comes to making decisions, they're, having, they, they're informed. They understand what's going on. Maybe not all the minute details, but they're understanding how this, this situation fits or this law fits into their situation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, in in listening to you, you know, I can I can almost hear some objections to it where it's like, okay, yeah, but I'm in a small town, you know, maybe maybe my audience can still get their answers from Google and I can just kind of work through it and all that. But there's this perception that you want to work with the experts. 
And being that good source of information really positions you as the expert. And there's something, at least especially from my perspective as a consumer, because I'm not a lawyer, I would be on the consumer side of things. There's something really, really comforting about, wow, I have an expert in my own backyard that I can go to, that I feel super confident in. And a lot of that comes from putting out that good information. And so- you know, I, I think that that's a really important aspect of it. And, and, you know, you don't have to have this super broad view. You don't have to feel like you have to educate everyone. You just educate your audience, the people that are going to be hiring you. And that really goes a long way towards, you know, building that expert status, building that trust, because, I, you know, we know a lot of people have some trust issues with, with the legal world mm-hmm. for various reasons. And so that's, that's just something that's really good to keep in mind. In our practice, and it's been this way for the vast majority of my practice, I'd say probably at least 16, maybe even 18 years, that education piece has always been up front. Um, we do workshops on a regular basis, and I can hard, already hear the objections. You mentioned a couple of them. Well, they don't work anymore. They're too expensive. You know, in my experience, there's a couple of things that, that, that we have learned to do that helps keep our workshops full and drives that business into our office. And the first one of those is consistency. You know, we have regular workshops on our calendars in our Janesville, Wisconsin office, in our Wales, Wisconsin office, and we just recently opened an office down in Florida. We have these already on our calendar um, and they're there. Um, So when somebody calls in and says, hey, I got a question about estate planning, the first step to our process for estate planning is attending our workshop. And we call it a workshop on purpose. It's not a seminar. It's not a dinner event. We don't serve food. We may give light and light refreshments or cook in some water or soda. I used to serve the food at, at workshops, at seminars, we called them back then. Right? <laughs> and the problem is once you've done a half a dozen of them, you start seeing the exact same people and they're just coming for the food. You know, so years ago, I stopped offering free food at our workshops because now you get people in there, they're more interested in what's going on. And the other thing I wanted to Hang on, hang on that you mentioned is that credibility or that idea of being the expert. If you're doing your workshops right and you're training in the workshops, it's all about education. Um, it helps set you up. It really starts that relationship of trust between you and the client. If you can stand in a group of, you know, f- five, six, eight, 10, 12 people, and we normally keep our workshops 15 or less, just because you want to make contact with everybody in the room. Yeah. It's important that that relationship, that interaction that happens in that workshop starts to build that trust relationship with the client. So then when they come to the free consultation, everybody comes to our workshop, we offer them a free consultation. We'll sit down with them free of charge, review their planning. If they have anything, answer their questions, do we have any of those? And then talk about what's next. Then that really sets that up. So when you do sit down and talk to them, you already know them, for one, because yeah. you've made the contact in the workshop. And number two, they know you. You know, not who's this guy. Yeah. You know, you've already they've already heard my background story. They already know already know why I do what I do. They've heard the story about my mom and how she got Alzheimer's and how that really pushed me into this area of practice that I do. And the importance of that, I don't need to re-educate them when I sit one-on-one with them in a client in a meeting. We can jump right into the meet and really get productive and really use both my time as the attorney wisely, but their time as the client, using that wisely as well. In the workshops, it's important that you don't just stand up there and and lecture. Um, You want to have your workshops be interactive. In our workshops, we tell stories. Yeah. We We have like 15 stories that we tie into what we're learning. You know, if we're learning about trust, we talk about the dollar story. You know, we talk about the condo story. You know, what happens if if your daughter inherits your money and buys a condo and then her husband divorces her? Talking stories, real life things. And, and, and I jokingly say I pick on the people in the room. Right? I'll pick a married couple out, you know, and I'll say, hey, t- take a look at each other. You know, do you realize when it comes to law, legal stuff that that person sitting next to you could be the biggest problem, the biggest issue? you have when it comes to your estate planning and they look at each other and laugh and look at me and laugh and 
sometimes I get some some blank stares back, like, what in the world are you talking about? How in the world can my husband or wife be my worst enemy when it comes to my estate plan? Right. So we go in and we talk about that. And it's so important to develop that relationship because, I mean, you hear the word all the time out there, but it is so true. It really comes down to building that relationship even before they sign that retainer agreement, before they hire you as the attorney to do their planning, developing and building that relationship. One thing that we have seen um, in, in, our, in our work is you know, not just having the consistent workshops, but having a process that follows up after the workshop as automated as possible because you know, attorneys are, are, are procrastinators by nature. You know, and if we if we if we say we'll follow up with somebody and we don't have a process to be certain that happens nine times out of 10, that may not happen. So that backside of it, not just having the workshops, having it consistently, you know, getting your name out there, your voice out there consistently, um, helping them understand that we're here. You may not have this issue or this problem right now, but you may have it a year or two from now. And, and with that drip marketing that we do regularly, you know, the Facebook posts, the LinkedIn posts, the newsletters keeps us in front of them on a regular basis. And, and we find that even if the people that come to the workshop don't immediately come in and see us, we're going to get a call a year or so, six months, eight years, uh, two years, five years, whatever it is. Yeah. Hey, this is happening now. I went to your workshop a long time ago. And guess what we tell them? Come back to another workshop, get refreshed, <laughs> yeah. and then come in and see us. Again, it's all about that education or the other phrase that's out there, information first. You know, yeah. I want to know what's going on, big picture, why I should come see you, what can you help me with, um, so they have that in front of them before they make the decision. Yeah. So, I, and, and you mentioned something, uh, you know, a few minutes ago, and I want to back up to that real quick. Basically, you know, you talk about your workshops, and, and that's, you know, the, one of the biggest ways that you get information out there. And you said that it's kind of the starting point for your overall hiring process with your prospective clients, your leads or whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. um, what, you know, to me, and I just had this revelation, I think that that's actually so brilliant because, you know, people might come in, they might be a little intimidated, you know, it's, it's this thing, but then you get into this group setting yeah. and now, you know, you're in with all of these other people, even if it's just a handful, you know, maybe three, four, five or six other people, but you're now in a group of people who are all kind of in the same boat with you. You can be a little bit more vulnerable. You can ask more questions and all that. Have you found that that actually makes for a smoother conversion process versus just trying to go individually with all of these consultations back to back? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I'm going to hang on a key word you said. It's a safe environment. Um, me, meaning they can ask their questions, they can get their information. And even sometimes they may not be actually verbally asking the question, but if somebody else in the rooms asks a question and they're like, oh, that's, that's exactly what I was concerned with. Yeah. And we have these workshops set up, you know, so they're interactive. So it's a safe environment. Um, and I, I mean, every single workshop, I start the same way, you know, after I give a little brief introduction of who we are and what we do and, you know, why we're here for this workshop. I make three promises every single time. Promise number one is our time together is going to go quick. You know, for our workshops, we run from an hour and a half to hour 45, sometimes two. It just depends upon how much interaction goes on. But I always promise that time is going to go quick. Number two, I always promise they're going to learn something. Because we are told regularly in our workshops, wow, that was so much information I didn't understand or I always thought this was true, but you told me that it wasn't true. And that's true. You know, and the third one, I always say, we're going to have some fun. I mean, I, I like to have fun. I like to laugh. I like to joy, joke. And doing all of that builds that relationship, begins the building of that relationship in a safe environment where, where they can ask the questions what they want to ask. And we always tell people, not only is it a free workshop, there's no obligation. Yeah. I'm not going to force you to come and see me just because you came to the workshop. We give you that opportunity free of charge. We always point that out as well. Yeah. But even if you come to that initial content, uh, the initial meeting, we call it our vision meeting, you know, because we're talking big picture, you know, what, what's yeah. your vision? What's your concern? What's your worry? And how, what solutions do we have? At the end of that meeting, you know, once we let them know exactly what the options we feel they have when it comes to their estate planning, 
if they say, no, I'm going to go someplace else, or we need to think about it, or we're not going to do this right now, we don't get mad at them. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, we, we move on. You know, we do the follow-up work. We send them the follow-up letters. You know, thanks for attending us. We get them on our newsletter. Um, do that work over the next uh, about six to eight weeks. You know, and then they just go onto the drip marketing side of things and get our monthly newsletter and top of the mind awareness and they come back. I would say probably if I had to throw a number out there, I'd be say, say 70% at least, if not more, of clients that don't that come to a workshop and don't retain us mm-hmm. after that first meeting, within a year and a half, they're coming back to us because now something has happened. Something we talked about happened. Now it's triggered them. They know who to call because we're in front of their mind. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's an important thing to keep in mind because, you know, I mean, unlike maybe criminal defense or personal injury, where a lot of times, you know, those cases are very immediate, you, you need help right away, you know, especially like on the family side, the estate planning side, like you are, um, you know, a lot of people are going to be doing a lot of research and they're going to be starting several months in advance, maybe a year in advance even. And so going ahead and getting there and getting that research. And then also, you know, to your point, after they leave the research, you have that system in place to continue to market to them, continue to educate them. And I think that that's the really important piece there. And that's what we've been preaching, you know, this whole time and why good informational content is so important is having that system in place to keep staying in touch. And so with that in mind, I know you've mentioned a few things already, but, you know, once, once the workshop's over, what is that, that secondary marketing system look like? You know, what, what kinds of marketing are you doing to those people who are now in your system from that workshop? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the, so the first thing we do is everybody that attends the workshop, they get a letter. It just says, hey, thanks for attending our workshop. Hope your time was, a, was, was valuable. Hope you learned something from it. And we always, the other thing that we always do in our workshop is when I give my three promises, I always ask for one promise in return, which is just filling out the evaluation form and getting it back to us. Um, and that's so important. You, get, you need to know who came to workshop, how to contact them. Yeah. We always ask for emails as well as addresses. They don't always fill it always out, but the more they fill out, the better it is for us to be able to reach out and contact them. But yeah. we always do that, that three for one idea. I'm going to make you three promises. If I keep one, one promise for you. It's all confidential. It's not going out of our office. But when they come to the workshop, after post-workshop, the goal is within 24 hours, that letter is in the mail to them. So they're getting that just a couple of days. Um, if, they've, if they've said, yes, I want to come in and see John or see one of the attorneys in our office, you know, we're on the phone the next day with them um, saying, hey, you said you wanted to see yes. John's calendar fills up really fast. Here's the dates we got available, you know, because we really want those people that said, yes, they raised their hand. We want to get them in as soon as possible um, because this stuff is fresh in their mind. But oftentimes there's people that that don't fill that information out or don't want to come in for an initial consultation right away. So we have another series of letters and phone calls that go out to them over the next six week period in two week intervals. You know, they get the first letter that says, hey, thanks for coming. Um, if you if you wanted a free consultation, somebody will reach out to you if they haven't. If you if you didn't want a free consultation, that's fine too. Then we have another follow-up letter that comes a couple of weeks after that. It says, hey, just wanted to touch base. You came to our workshop, wanted to give another another opportunity. And then two weeks later, a third letter goes out, says, Hey, you 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 said you wanted to come or you came to the workshop. Any questions we can help you with, we're here for you. And then, you know, as attorneys, we always have to make it really clear that the client, the person who came to the workshop isn't our client, you know, so that last letter on the attorney side of things, it's the non-engagement letter. Hey, you didn't engage us to do any work. We don't have an attorney client privilege, but hey, if you ever get out there and you need your estate planning done, here's some things to keep in mind. And we give a list like four or five things that they should be asking whatever attorney that they use after the fact. And then, and then they automatically go onto the drip marketing system. You know, so anybody, any email that we collect, you know, through Spotlight, you guys get it all set up beautifully, beautifully for us. It just happens automatically. And that's so important. Again, going back to the idea that the attorney is, is procrastination, you know, put things off all the time. It comes with the nature of the beast because we are so busy. Um, and we, you always don't have the support staff. I mean, we're, we're a three attorney office. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's really a small office and we don't have the, full support staff that an that a office of 15, 20, 30, or 500 attorneys would have. 
Yeah. You know, so we've got to rely on the experts in that side of it with the marketing and spotlight branding. I mean, I, I, I could spend the rest of the podcast just, just praising you guys because it's so important that you have people like spotlight behind you that's supporting what you do, um, developing a great website. I mean, I could talk for hours on our website. Um, the, the website we used to have three years ago, we hardly got any traffic at all on our website. And we track all of our referral sources. Mm. And our Google search website referrals is like second to direct referrals from other clients and, and, and people who have already done work with. That was not there before. <laughs> you know? yeah. And it's all because we've, we've been able to work with Spotlight and mm. lean on your all's expertise to get this up there so that not only do we have the workshop they attend to get education, but now we've got the website that backs up everything we talked about at the workshop. We've got the newsletters that are coming out. We've got the social media posts. So our name is out there on a regular basis um, so that when something does come up, we're top of the mind awareness and they pick up the phone and call us, shoot us an email, whatever, to reach out to say, hey, I need help. Yeah. And, and I think, in, and while I love just all of the praise and and would love to keep going down that road. We'll stick to the we'll stick to the topic at hand. But you know, the I think the important thing to remember is like, you know, is your obviously the workshop is all about education, all about information. But when they get back on that marketing campaign, the content loop, the drips, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. it's it's what they're actually getting that's also important. You know, it's not it's- it's not just like, hey, call us, hey, call us, hey, call us. It's here, this is a blog post about such and such, or this is a video about this aspect of estate planning. Like you're still continuing to educate while they're kind absolutely. of still in your funnel and still trying to make that decision. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It all, I mean, it all comes back to the education, the information first. Um, you know, this just a perfect example, you know, October is special needs awareness month you know, on the legal side of things. So we put a lot of stuff together on our website, on our blog posts that deal with people that have special needs um, and how to do estate planning for them. It may not affect most people right now, but it might affect a family down the road, you know, and having that information out there and available to them is so important because like you said, it's not, it's for most people, it's not just a one time, you know, they don't just hear it and they get it. Right. They got to hear it sometimes two or three or four times. And that's what's so great about our process that, that really starts with education and is education all the way through the hiring process. You know, once they hire us, we've got a whole proce- procedure in place on, you know, what's the next level of education we need to make with these clients. Um, both Doug and I and Amber, the three attorneys, we're not artists, but we love drawing pictures. <laughs> and because people learn visually. Um and we do that all the time. We do, here's, here's how this type of trust would work. Here's what happens if this happens. Draw on these diagrams, these pictures out that really continues that education process. And it's, it doesn't, again, it never stops. I mean, we have a whole backside of our process. Once people have hired us and we've done their estate plan, you know, it used to be the attorney would say, so long, call me if you got a problem. But so much has changed recently. I mean, not just recently, in the past 10 years, 15 years, you know, laws are changing more regularly, you know, family situations change, um, circumstances change, somebody dies, somebody gets married, you inherit money. So we have a whole process which continues with education. We call it our TLC maintenance program. So what does TLC stand for? Tender love and care. Absolutely but not in our office. (laughs) It stands for thorough lifetime and complete. Yes, we give our clients TLC. But this is a maintenance program where instead of the client having the burden to make certain that their their plan is maintained throughout the years, they hire us, really retain our office to be the forefront. We have a staff member in our office that happens to be my wife. She does a great job at it, if I have to say it biasedly anyway. She reaches out to all of our clients on a regular basis and just touches base. Hey, how you doing? What's up? What's going on? We send the birthday cards, the anniversary cards, the Christmas gifts. Um, And then every quarter or every two quarters, we have another education event, you know, because these clients need to continue to learn and understand what happens with their plan and the different aspects. What happens when my wife dies? 
What happens when my wife and, and I die and now my son's in charge? So we do these training continually with that um, on a regular basis, you know, for those clients, their estate plan's done. You know, it's, it's already in place. They've got everything ready. They need to go. So if something happens, they're all set. But you can't just sit it on a shelf. Um, I ran across a phrase several years ago, and I, I, I've hung on to it because it's so great. Estate planning is not a product. It's a process. Yeah. Meaning it doesn't, it's, it's not the old school sign the will stuff in the safe deposit box and wait till you die. It's an ongoing, continual process that if it's not maintained, if it's not kept up to date, we don't know if it's going to work or not. And, yeah. and the problem is, when do you find out whether your plan works or not? When it's too late. When it's too late, when you're dead yeah. and gone. Right. <laughs> so that's so important that, you under, that, that, that people understand that process. Yeah. So uh, one last question here before we wrap up everything. You know, obviously, workshops are very central and very important part of your overall process. What tips do you have for people out there who are maybe interested in starting a workshop program? You know, what, what have you learned along the way that has made your workshops work really well? Yeah. Okay. I'm going back to the consistency. That was sort of the number one thing. Have them regularly set, um, regularly market them. And I'm not talking about, you know, necessarily direct mail or, or a newspaper ad, although those are great too, you know, but just have it consistently out there and then, and then train the staff to direct the clients to the workshop. We get a lot of pushback. Well, why do I go to a workshop? I don't want, I already know this stuff. I don't need to go to a workshop. And one of the best things, and this is, this is true. Well, you know, John's calendar is three, four, four weeks out. You're not going to get in to see John in, in you know, a month from now. And we've got a workshop two weeks from now that you may as well come to. We'll go ahead and get your calendar, your book, your, your appointment on the calendar, but go ahead and come to that workshop. And then yeah. we use that all the time to push them through the work. So drive the clients through the workshop and, and don't have time to go into workshop content, but the workshop needs to be developed in such a way that it is, that it is you, the way we say it is you're learning law, but you don't know you're learning law. Because again, we teach it through stories that we tell. Yeah. Um, again, a lot of times it's interactive with the client. Yeah. And the biggest thing that I have learned over the years when it comes to the whole idea of, of lawyering and marketing and workshops is I don't have to do it all. <laughs> That's right. I, I call it my aha moment. Um, so often we as attorneys, because of our training, because of our knowledge, because, of, because of, of everything that we do to get to the point we're at, we want to stay in control of everything. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a shout out to an old book. I don't know if you've read it or not, but I would suggest it. The E-Myth by, yes. uh, by Gerber is the yeah. last name. Phenomenal book. Yeah. Um, the idea is you don't have to hold on and do everything yourself. Find those other qualified professionals, whether they're you know, somebody you hire on your staff or whether it's an outside marketing firm or, or uh, right now we're going through a computer update. I know nothing about computers, right? I know enough to be dangerous. So we're hiring the experts to come in and do our, our system update. Don't have, the attorney needs to get out of the way yeah. to be certain that the law office can go to the next level because with the attorney in charge, this is just my opinion. And I know there's statistics out there to prove it as well, but my opinion with the attorney in charge, you only get so far. And when you hit that level, you're not going to go any farther until you get the attorney out of the way and let that great staff really take the office to the next level. And at that point in time, the attorney's just on for, along for the ride. You know, I, I kind of feel we're right there with our office. You know, the attorneys are here, but it's more of just us being along for the ride with the staff that we have and driving this office to the next level. Um, and, and again, we educate clients and we educate our staff. You know, we do regular training, regular um, work with our staff to help them do a better job so that we attorneys can do what we're best at, which is getting in front of people and talking, um, yeah. meeting clients, finding out what their needs are. Um, and that's so important that, uh, that understanding that came several years ago for me, the aha moment. Get out of the way, John. <laughs> right. you know, this is bigger than you. Let this staff, these professionals, these experts that you've brought along beside you, you've hired, whatever, let them do what they do best and hang on for the ride because it's going to be fun. Yeah. 
Awesome. Well, those are all the questions that I have, but we do have one final question that we ask everybody before we wrap up every show. And that is uh, if you had one piece of advice for our lawyers out there, could be related to workshops or it could be just general life advice that you've learned along the way, what would it be? Yeah, I, I think general life advice I've learned along the way, and you have a lot of talk about this, but you really need to figure out, and this is different for everybody, the balance. Um, my, I mentioned earlier, my wife works for us. It's really easy for us to talk office all the time. Um, it's easy for the attorney to talk office all the time. So we have a rule, Andrea and I. No office after six o'clock. <laughs> you know, it's six o'clock. If we're home for dinner, we're not at an office function or office event or something. You know, no, no office after six o'clock. So, so even if your wife doesn't work for you, or you're on your own, whatever. You need to figure out that work-life balance. You don't have to work, um, you know, the ninety hours a week and never have any life outside of the office. And there's a lot of attorneys that are out there, but you need to find that balance because, yes, attorney. That's your career, that's your life, that's what you're making your money at, that's how you're surviving, that's how you're meeting your bills. But there's more to life than just the practice of law. So find that balance. And it's different for everybody. You know, it might be a 60 hour week or an 80 hour week still, but find the balance, find the time where you can get away from it all so that when you come back, you're refreshed. Yeah. You're, you're, you're ready to go, you're, you're reinvigorated. And you're ready to step right back in and, and do the best you can for your clients. Awesome. Well, John, this has been absolutely fantastic advice and insight. Uh, I know that it's really helpful for everybody out there. And I encourage everyone, if you're not doing workshops uh, in your office, do that. If you're not if you don't have any sort of educational component in your marketing or anything, definitely start there. Um, it, it, it really is going to have a lot of benefits for you and your office and, and growth and, and moving forward and all of that. So that is going to do it for us this week. Uh, continue to rate, review us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you're watching the show. We're all over the place. Uh, that is going to do it for us. John, thank you so much for spending some time with us this week. Great. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next time. Uh, Bye. Thanks for listening. To learn more, go to spotlightbranding.com slash center stage.